Welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio, starring award-winning real estate coaches and number one international best-selling authors, Tim and Julie Harris. This is the number one daily radio show for realtors looking for a no BS, authentic, real-time coaching experience. What's really working in today's market, how to generate more leads, make more money, and have more time for what you love in your life. And now your hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. Welcome back. Today we are talking about, and this is part two, of how to make money every day until New Year's Day on your work days. And yesterday we went through helping you understand what your work days are and your leisure days and the rest of it, because certainly in fourth quarter there are a lot of headwinds to getting work done. And I also, I think Julie and I were talking after yesterday's show, and it's important to recognize the fact that on the days that you're not working, don't work, and on the days you're working, work. And it's sometimes difficult for people to know, well, what the hell does that mean? And that's really what the real estate treasure map is all about. It's telling you specifically what you should be focusing on every single day. And that actually is a great lead into point number five. Yes. So point number five, hopefully you're taking notes here. What production goals are necessary to support your goals in five areas of life? We talked about that yesterday, and it's also in your treasure map. But what are the production goals that will support your actual goals in addition to paying your normal personal and business overhead and having an amazing holiday coming up? So for example, questions to ask yourself and numbers to actually commit to. Question number one, how many new listings must you take before the new year? Next question, how many closings are already scheduled and are you confident they will close? Some of you need to get in front of that. Next, how many new pending sales must you create? How many price reductions are needed? That's a new thought for many to actually sell your listings. And then how many leads must you connect to and set appointments within the next seven days so they will transact this year? Some of you are sitting on a pile of lead follow-up. And I have to say that a lot of the deals that I'm hearing about right now are buyers that are coming back into the market because they have things to choose from. They don't have to compete. They're already pre-qualified. They can handle the payment. That does exist. Some of you guys have freaked out and convinced yourselves that high interest rates mean no more buyers. Well, there are fewer buyers and there are different buyers. Do you know who your buyers are? Oddly enough, the buyers and often the sellers are more motivated this time of year than any other time of the year, especially when you're dealing with expired sellers and especially when you're dealing with relocating buyers. And also a lot of people put the artificial deadline of wanting to be in their new home prior to the end of the year uh, for the holidays. So, you know, this is actually a fantastic time of the year to work, not to be coasting and hoping that you build momentum back into next year. It is our firm belief, and we are looking for reasons not to believe this, but it is our firm belief that it'll be more difficult to build momentum in if you're just starting essentially January 1st, 2023. Uh, it's going to be harder to build momentum then than it is now because there's going to be so many headwinds that are going to be essentially inundating the news uh, headlines and people's mindsets and just all the rest of it. The inflation problem is not going away. Unemployment is increasing. There's a lot of things that are going to occupy people's, you know, frankly, they're, it's going to feed into their fear. So if you're not building momentum into next year by having customers, by having listings, you're going to have a problem. So Julie mentioned the number of listings you need to have. Well, that is all about the magic number. Which is point number six, and we're going to clarify that. Point number six, write this down. Know your magic number and increase it by 20% to account for the shifting market and the holidays. To simplify your production goals, focus on listings. Of course, the buyers will come. Your magic number is the number of active listings you must have at all times to meet or exceed your unit goals per month. If you need three consistent closings per month, you probably need five active listings at all times. Some markets you might need six by now in order to produce those predictable results. That's what your magic number is. And my magic number might be different than yours. Different well, markets, different goals. Again, the magic number is a critical part. Everything Julie's going to be presenting going forward is a critical part of the real estate treasure map. You get the real estate treasure map. That's our fancy way of uh, calling it your business plan. But you get your real estate treasure map for free when you join Premier Coaching. It is one of the first things we have. Every new coaching client download and complete. It is a comprehensive business plan. It's a comprehensive business and life plan. It's what all of you need to have a clear sense of direction. If you're feeling a little fear, if you're feeling dread, if you're feeling uncertainty, lack of direction, that's the whole point of the real estate treasure map. Julie and I are working on ours right now. We've been working on it for like the past week. We've been talking about Mm -hmm. it. In other words, we've been in formulation and this is for the rest of the year and into next year. And now we're going to probably, we're going to formalize it over the next week or so and actually write everything down. And we get very binary in what we're focusing on. That's what the real estate treasure map is all designed to do for you. You get the real estate treasure map for free in addition to all the other great things in terms of 
Like we'll show you how to do lead generation. There's at least 20 different sources of seller leads you can be pursuing. It costs you nothing for at least 10 or 12 of these seller leads. No referral fees. In other words, you're not buying leads. You're actually proactively learning how to lead generate yourself. Um, and we're going to teach you how scripts, objection handlers, you're going to actually learn how to be the best version of yourself as a real estate professional. And again, it's free. You can join now. Just text the word premier to 47372, text the word premier to 47372. And yes, that does include a daily semi-private coaching call with a Harris certified coach every single word day for the rest of the year. Imagine having a coach giving you that sense of direction that you absolutely need that's going to keep you on track with whatever your goals were in the real estate treasure map. So text the word premier to 47372. Text the word premier to 47372. Or you can just go to members.timandjulieharris.com. And remember when texting message and data rates may apply. Another critical thing for your absolute success with what is left in this year going towards the new year is your daily schedule. That's point number seven. What daily schedule must you follow? Again, we're talking about work days here to achieve the results your goals actually require of you. How do you figure this out? Well, start with the following rule. Your daily contacts must equal the number of transactions you need yearly. If you need 24 transactions, you've got to make 24 contacts. 12 transactions, 12 contacts. That That's a, where you start. Don't. That is such an amazingly simple but bizarre diabolical rule that we found to be true <laughs> over all the years we've been coaching. And it is so strange. I think it's all psychological, really. Mm -hmm. So you do your real estate treasure map. You know you have to close, say, 10 or 12 or 20 or 100 or 200 transactions. Now, obviously, the more transactions, the more contacts you have to make, the more you're going to have to be clever about how you go about making them. But for most of you, you're going to have fantastic years if you sell between 15. Like some of you are blessed with average sale prices. They're over a million dollars. So, you know, maybe it's 15. You're going to have an incredible year of transactions. Maybe it's 30. You guys get the point. You're going to have to get in the habit of making that number of contacts per day. And a contact is a conversation with a decision-making adult. A conversation is not something digital. And we do teach you how to do all that efficiently. So you can generally speaking, make 10 contacts per hour, have actually, you know, seven to 10 meaningful conversations with decision-making adults about selling their home or buying a home, primarily selling a home. That is what the core the essence of any successful salesperson is going to do. If you don't like what you're getting, make more contacts, talk to more people and learn. Obviously you have to know what to say. Obviously, you're going to have to move past your ego's resistance to knowing what to say and how to say it. That's what we teach you in Premier Coaching. So well, and remember, as your skills improve, the number of contacts required always shrinks. For example, if you're great at expireds, you know, you're not just dabbling, but you're really great at it, and you know you set an appointment for every 10 contacts, well, you no longer have to make 24 contacts to get the same results. And that is what Premier Coaching is about. That's ultimately what Julie just said. That's the game. So what we do when someone gets really efficient at uh, proactively lead generate, we'll make a deal with them in essence, where if you set one or rather when you set one pre-qualified listing appointment per day, and we'll show you how to do it. One pre-qualified listing appointment per day. If you choose to, you don't have to prospect the rest of the day. You don't have to do any more lead generation the rest of the day because you've, you've met that minimum criteria. So if you set five pre-qualified listing appointments a day, and I know some of you are, this is you know crazy. You can't even fathom doing this because you never have. Well, start imagining you do it. That way you will. Because the reality of it is, is in this market, there's never been a better time to be a listing agent. And since 2008 for sure. This is the best time to be learning how to be a proactive lead generator. This is the best time to pivot away from the tyranny of buying leads and focus more on obviously what you really wanted to do, which is have independence, have freedom. That only comes from a list, being a listing agent. Yes. And you know what usually happens when they focus that now let's say the light bulb went off. I got to make more contacts than I'm probably making if we're being honest, right? All right. So I'm going to embrace that idea. How can I make the most contacts in the least amount of time? So what they'll do typically, because there's no conflict in it, is something like just listed, just sold, circle, well, prospecting, right. you know, and then they'll be like, victory, I made my 24 contacts. And they'll do that for like a week or two with, you know, not very many great results. You might get a quasi lead or two. And then, because now you've broken through, really the, the use of that circle prospecting to me as a coach is to get you used to being on the phone and break through your resistance of that. And then what happens is they want to make contacts that result in an appointment. So what Julie just said, really important, when you're new at proactive lead generation, do start with the low resistance uh, contacts. And that's going to be, uh, you're really your circle prospecting or, you know, just listed, just sold. It's called a million different things, but that's an essence of it. And then you're going to move on to centers of influence and past clients. You're not going to get any resistance really from either of those buckets. And then you move towards 
actually the high yield um, contacts, which are going to be your expired or for sale by owners, notice of defaults. A bit more skill too. I mean, all these different things that we teach you in Premier Coaching. But you can resist as long as you want uh, doing the proactive lead generation. But it's going to cost you maybe your real estate career. Because in a market like this, you're not going to passively lead generate your way to success. Julie and I had have had many, many meaningful... This happened last year, last time in 2007 and 2008. And it was something I was hoping, frankly, to avoid professionally, but also because I wasn't sure, Julie and I weren't sure, we wanted to be coaches during another set uh, setback like what we experienced in 2007 and 2008. We didn't know whether we wanted to be in the industry because it was so sad, to be honest with you. There were so many agents that were calling us, not in 2006, late 2006 into 2007, when they should have been essentially getting their business right, but they were calling us in 2008, 2009, 2010, when it was effectively too late and they had already burned through all their savings and they already essentially were saying, all right, I need to know how to actually efficiently run a real estate business so I produce a profit. That's when they discovered that, yes, indeed, your product of your real estate business is profit. Yes, that's when they realized that the highest and truest purpose of themselves on this planet is being of service to other people, not the essentially the, the building up of the ego and the brand and the rest of it. They pivoted. They had to experience massive hardship. And I personally and Julie didn't, we didn't know whether we wanted to go through it. Well, here we are going through it again. <laughs> we chose to toe the line. We figured that we are, and it hope, frankly, again, we are hoping that there would be other voices that arose in the real estate industry that would essentially effectively allow us to feel comfortable stepping out of the industry. We are hoping there would be other truth tellers that were coming into the industry and shining lights on all the, you know, the cockroaches that, and so they, you know <laughs> what I'm saying? That's the reality. That's how we truthfully were hoping uh, this phase in the real estate career uh, or the real estate industry would be going, uh, would be happening where we didn't have to be active participants in doing podcasts like this. Well, here we are. And here's what I'm here to tell you. It's going to get worse before it gets better. And all the things that marginally worked in the past seller's market aren't going to work at all in this new market. And Julie and I have been receiving, those calls are coming in faster now because of this podcast. We didn't have this podcast in 07. So now more people are reaching out to us. They're saying, Tim, what do I do to start essentially making it so I don't have to lose everything that I've gained during this past seller's market? I have a team. I have a brand. I have a bunch of social media. I have a bunch of closings, awards, and plaques, and all the rest of it. What do I do to save my business? What do I do to save myself personally? What do I do to make it so I don't have to spend my savings? savings and my kids, you know, college savings plans. And that's what, that's what we focus on. That's what we've always focused on. And Julie and I are not trendy. We're not just going to gravitate towards talking about one thing and then go talk about another thing and talk about another thing. We are always going to stay on mission because we know it's the truth. And look, we do believe in social media. We do believe in passive lead generation. We do believe in teams. We do believe in marketing and branding, but it comes after you've learned how to be a proactive lead generator. If you do all that stuff before you learn how to be a proactive lead generator, which is by the way, every single one of you listening, every single one of you listening with a team, you don't know how to do the proactive lead generation at a high level because you've only been in the industry when it, it was almost like looked down upon to be a proactive lead generator. You've been in the industry where everybody was a Gary Vanderchuk one wannabe and everyone was basically saying you got to buy your business you got to work on your brand your brand is everything your brand is indelible your brand is going to follow you through your life blah 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 right that is what you guys have all been beaten over the head with right work on your logo and your website and all your other things oh your crm and your drip campaigns sound familiar well what if all that stuff is there to be in service to the proactive lead generation which you've never learned how to do the past market has made even bad ideas good because there was so much FOMO in the market. Buyers were buying out of fear of loss. Sellers were selling, frankly, because they were hope, thinking they're selling at the peak. The interest rates were so low that, oh my gosh, we're going to talk about all this on a different podcast. I mean, I can go forever. Max, our dog was qualified to buy something. Yeah, our French bulldog. He, he can was... pay in dog food. <laughs> you guys get the point? That Those days are over and they're not going to return. There's not going to be a bounce back. So please, i I sincerely, and I'm not, I'm not using this word lightly. I beg you, do not wait to find out what we're telling you is true because I don't want to receive a call from you two years from now where you're saying you wish you would have listened to us today and now you've basically lost everything you built. And that is unfortunately what many agents will do. Share this podcast. A lot of the people you know in the real estate industry you know, have their heads out of the sand. People have got to face down their demons and face the reality that, look, you in the past, assuming you've been in the business since 2007, you made the most of what that market had to offer. Now you got to make the most of what this market has to offer. And guess what? It's going to be different. 
In this market, it's going to be different what you have to do to be successful long term. You got to learn. You got to learn quick. Don't wait to start eroding. Oh, I had this again. Julie and I had this great conversation with a big team the other day, and we were talking about their buyer side of the business. This person had 15 buyer agents, and I was talking to them something that they did not want to talk about, and they tried to avoid the topic. They tried to change the topic. They tried to act like they didn't know what the hell I was talking about. I was asking them what their profit is per buyer agent side, and these are buyer agents that are on a team. Some of them were salaried. Some of them were on commission. Well, you know, this person acted like they didn't know what it was, and I asked more questions, and they did, and they didn't want to tell me, and the answer was they were making no profit off the buyer side transactions. No profit. To which I asked why. And they said, well, we used to be able to get really good business from Zillow. We used to be able to get really business from this, the other thing. And it's not working, but I still have the same fixed costs for all these buyer agents. I still have the staff in place that's supposed to support the buyer agents. I'm still actually thinking that somehow magically I'm going to be able to get, you know, that dog to hunt again. The old system doesn't work. You got to adapt to a new system. Chances are, 100% chance, if you're successful in the past market, you'll be more successful in this market. Please do not wait too long. That's right. So point number eight, that brings us to point number eight. What should you be doing? Upgrade your skills. So be introspective. Write this down. What are your strengths and weaknesses? So how do you figure that out? Take this quick assessment to find out what you need to work most on. It's called SWAT, right? A lot of you know that. Mm -hmm. Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. In the real estate industry, most agents, most brokers, most teams never get past the S. We love talking about our strengths. (laughs) That's true. We never get to weaknesses. We then will, we like opportunities, but we never talk about threats. You need to focus on the things. Whatever you're resisting is where your growth needs to be. So if you're, if you're resisting the weakness part, it, because you, if you're having a, an impossible time being introspective about where you're weak, well, chances are, you know, write down all the things that you don't want to do or the ones, the things you right. want to do the least in your business. Like when Julie was talking about, I'm, I'm thinking about, say, an agent with maybe two assistants or an agent that's been buying all their business, getting all the business from referral companies or Zillow or whatever. And I was thinking about to what you were saying about making contacts. And I was thinking what a lot of these agents are doing is they're going to hire or think that a contact can be made by an ISA. So a lot of you were immediately going to hit the lazy button, right? You're abdicating the work thinking you're going to get the benefit of, the, of essentially the results. You're going to hire an ISA to go start calling expires. How many of you thought that? That's dumb. Yeah, Don't and how would that. you ever hold somebody like that accountable if you've never done it yourself? Exactly. You can't. Get on the phone. Learn how to actually have meaningful conversations. We're going to have Red X on here soon, the, one of the owners of Red X. And we're going to tell you guys, exact, frankly, what Julie and I did. So remember, Julie and I started out doing proactive lead generation in our career. Then we actually pivoted towards the branding and the marketing stuff. And then we realized that our profit margins were terrible. And they're even worse now. And then we went back to doing the proactive lead generation. And then essentially our business, our net worth and our our net profit took off again. We got in this business so we could have financial freedom. We got in this business, not for the awards, not for the plaques. True story. I've never told on this podcast before. And I'll be quick because I know you have a coaching call. Julie and I were uh, essentially our first year in the business sold over hundred homes per year. Then after that, by the time we were like in the business for three years, I don't remember the name of the award for Remax, but it was Lifetime Achievement or Hall of Fame or something. Mm -hmm. And evidently we had achieved that award faster than anyone at the time in Remax. I don't remember all the particulars. Some of you will be very anal about this. And if I'm getting all my, any of my facts wrong about the names and the levels, that's fine. Julie and I loved Remax, great brokerage, loved our broker, no complaints whatsoever. All right. Now, obviously we're with EXP and, you know, a thousand X more enthusiastic about EXP. It's definitely the broker for this new, uh, new market going forward. But I remember, uh, there was a, a monthly awards of the top agents in our market. And then there were, uh, there was a list that came out the top 20 agents. And then there was uh, award ceremonies at the end of the year. Julie and I got to the point where we were so, and I'll be, I'll confess mostly me. We're so competitive with where we were on that list <laughs> And so competitive, you're laughing at me, I heard. And, <laughs> we so, were, and so competitive, Never. I was. And so, but just let's talk about the monthly list. I would do dumb things and talk Julie into doing dumb things just so we could sell more houses, just so we could be higher up in the list. I replaced ego, ego and wanting to win awards and recognition. And we are in our 20s. You're allowed to be dumb when you're in 20s to a certain extent with essentially net profit. 
Okay, so and I remember again, I realized we were doing it because it was April. We were paying our taxes. Our accountant came in. It was our third year in the business. He showed us the tax return from our first year in the business and our tax return during our third year of the business. Our business had more than doubled. Our revenue had more than doubled. Our units had more than doubled. The whole thing by the time we were in the business for our third year. But guess what? Our net profit was less. And he didn't say anything. He just made sure I saw it. And I thought about that. I ignored it at first. Oh, we're building the business for the future. We're building a brand. This is, we invested now for the future. And we're going to have, and it'll, no, all this crap. No, it's, none of it was true. We were none, chasing the wrong thing. Exactly. And we allowed our egos and we allowed the industry to co-op what was in our best interest. Mm -hmm. And so we stopped being on the list. We just opted out and it wasn't easy because we were, well, why would you not want to be on the list? But furthermore, at the end of the year at those award ceremonies, when we were about to be recognized for this big achievement, we didn't go to the ceremony. Now I wasn't, and Julie and I weren't trying to be jerks. We didn't know they had something special planned for us. We just didn't want to go because we knew our egos and our mindset wasn't strong enough that we wouldn't be pulled back into that vortex. That vortex becomes a lifestyle. That vortex becomes something that will, for the entirety of your career, always be challenging you to produce net profit because you're going to want to always continue to be seen as number one. And that is what happened and that's what happens. And that's what we're seeing now. This is one of the reasons that Julie and I are the real deal when it comes to pod, or podcasting. Yes. But also real estate coaches been there, done that. And frankly, being a successful real estate coach, what we've done in the industry was about a billion X harder than being that's successful true. selling real estate. You want to finish this last point? I would point? agree that. Okay. So, and, and I was thinking as you were talking, I agree with everything you said, but that one of the underlying issues is maybe they don't really know how to do a skills assessment because of the buoyancy of the market and all that kind of stuff. So point number eight is upgrade your skills. So how do you know? Ask yourself these questions. Here's how you know where your skills are. Question number one, are you proactive about generating new leads? This means that you know how to create pre-qualified appointments without buying them. Are you focused on setting new listing appointments every week or are you relying on luck, repeat, and referral leads or worse, buying leads? You know, somebody told me the other day that the average cost, not per deal, but per lead, was between $500 and $1,000 per lead, not per deal done. She told us, and this was a big team leader, and we will not mention her name, yep. that her average cost per Zillow lead, listen to what I'm telling you guys, not closed transaction, lead, which is just some information, right? Did a name, a phone number, an email address. May or may not transact. 600 bucks. Yep. That's what Zillow is now charging per crappy lead, $600. For crappy buyer lead, $600. It's insane. It's always been insane and now it's more insane. And yet some of you are crashing your arms and saying, this is what I know. I'm going to make it work. Why make it work? Migrate to the new market. There's a, there's a difference between quitting and quitting while you're ahead. Uh, quitting while you're ahead means that you can actually take your chips off the table, you know, off the poker table, and you can actually walk away a winner. That's what many of you should be doing now. And then migrating your business to a new business model where you can actually be focused on profit. That's what this market's going to award. Julie had to go to a, a, another podcast and a coaching call. So I'm going to finish up these points. And remember, this is your assessment. Do you follow up on your leads furiously fast using the lead follow-up scripts? Furiously fast lead follow-up is one of the easiest hacks for being successful in real estate. If you want to know how uh, essentially the new agents kick the old agents with you know, the grizzled veteran butts, it's furiously fast lead follow-up. And do it on the phone. Call people back. If someone texts you, emails you, direct messages you, it doesn't matter, smoke signals, it really doesn't matter, you call them back. Always call. Why? Because nobody else does. It gives you an unfair advantage. And there's a whole generation of people, not just young people, who do not know how to have a meaningful conversation on the phone. They just don't. They basically short, Twitter has made everyone dumb. That and, you know, SMS, because everyone's used to short messages. Have a meaningful conversation. Don't know what to say or how to say it. At least start out having a scripted conversation. Use our scripts are nothing more than conversational outlines. That's what they are at the end of the day. Telling you questions, and all of our scripts are question, questions based. You know, all of our, everything that we're asking you to um, say is based on a, an order of questions that makes sense, that helps you to determine the motivation of that, again, ideally a seller. And also it makes it so the seller is receiving an experience from you that's very professional. Julie and I had another meeting the other day, and this was for another very successful agent. I'm trying to avoid names or any inferences because I don't want them to be mad thinking I talked about them without permission on our podcast. So 
I'm having this, I was observant of this person who was talking to another top producer and it was over a dinner. And this person was not asking any questions. All this person was doing was talking about themselves, never actually showing any interest in anything the other person said. And when the other person said something, the agent that I'm referring to would just uh, lightly acknowledge it and go back and talk about themselves, talk about their experience. They wanted all the attention in the room to be directed towards them. And that is what a lot of agents do without knowing it because they've never been trained or never recognized what a turnoff that is. When you focus on yourself and you talk about yourself, you're losing that uh, the audience of the person that you're trying to influence. Influence to listen to you, influence to maybe do business with you, influence to respect you, influence to be your friend. Do not talk about yourself. And if you want to know if you're, again, this is going to be an ego thing. And it is for all of us. Because all of us are designed to believe that the point of a conversation is they talk about themselves, you talk about yourselves. It's like a tennis match, right? And, and you're constantly waiting for the person to stop talking so you can talk about yourself. That is going to be, again, a weakness of many real estate people because they've never actually learned how to have high-level conversations. So I'll give you a little hint on this. We talked about this in the podcast. And they, I keep saying podcast. But well, we do talk about it in the podcast. We talk about, talk about it in the coaching program a lot. And this is the reason a lot of you absolutely positively need scripts, a.k.a. conversation outlines. The, the whole point of having a conversation with someone is to learn more about them. But in doing so, by asking them questions and then listening to what they're saying and then not talking about yourself, they don't really care about you. They don't really want to know about you. They want to talk more about their favorite subject, which is themselves. If you don't believe me, go to any real estate event and notice how every agent just wants to talk about themselves. It's very rare that you'll come across anybody in life, but especially in real estate, because again, real estate builds up the ego. Real estate builds up the ego, builds up the recognition, builds up the need for more recognition and more ego uh, gratification. You guys get it? Here's what the special, essentially the higher level people will have. And notice this, when you're hearing someone say, you know, she just has that it factor or he has that it factor. What is that it factor? What is that thing that when someone walks into the room, you know, all the attention goes to them? What is it? It's not just how they look. I mean, we've all known people that look like bullfrogs, right? That have the it factor. We Leaders. Look at the leaders that people will give all kinds of, you know, political, though I would argue political leaders aren't, you guys understand what I'm saying here, not being political, but you know, whatever. But if you look at essentially all the most influential people in the history of history have been people that are, have mastered the art and the science of actually asking questions. That is the secret sauce to sales. That's all selling is. It's asking questions and not like a bright light, bright light in their face and interrogation style actually participating and having a conversation where you're showing genuine interest. And some of you are going to have to learn how to show genuine interest because your brains are so wired to talk about yourselves. That's the point of using a script. When you become that person that people will know, here, let me just set this up for you, okay? In real life, I want you to imagine that you are, uh, you walk into a big room, let's just make it, you know, realistic. And it's, let's say it's, there's EXP cons going on right now. And let's say you walk into a room full of EXP agents, real estate agents, and you know what the conversation is going to be. It's like, like it always is. People are talking about themselves. People are talking about their latest whiz bang idea. People are talking about their great team, their marketing idea, all things that are interesting. And then there's this other person that everyone reveres, everyone respects, and they don't quite know why. That person has the it factor. They can be young, they can be old, they can be pretty, they can be ugly, they can be fat, they can be thin, it does not matter. But when you're around this person, when you, so let's say you go up to them, here's what they're going to do. They're going to look you in the eye, they're not going to look over your shoulder to see who else they might be wanting to have a conversation with, they're not going to be looking at their damn phones, that's for sure, they're not going to talk about themselves. The last thing you're going to hear them do is talk about themselves. They might give you a little breadcrumb. It's not because they're trying to hide from talking about themselves. It's because they want to talk about you. And see, here's what happens. They, and people do this naturally, really, really good communicators. It's not a manipulation. It's what they do naturally. And again, this is what all of you will do naturally if you unplug from your, you know, essentially your neurotic need 
for recognition and acceptance by talking about yourself. Remember, everyone's favorite topic is themselves. Lean back into asking questions. Don't know what questions to ask. Use our scripts. And then what we want you to do is memorize the scripts. Then we want you to internalize the scripts. And then we want you to personalize the scripts. So that when you are talking, you are using a script that works that you don't even remember why you're asking the questions and what you're at in the order in which you're asking. You just are. And again, uh, we talk about this in the podcast and coaching. One of the most basic things you can learn how to do is forward family, occupation, recreation, dreams. Those are, that's the conversation outline to have when you're meeting people. Some of you have a lot of social anxiety. It's very common, by the way. Um, that's the reason that people do a lot of alcohol and things like that when they go to social events because they get super nervous. And frankly, after COVID and in this digital age where everyone hides behind a keyboard and everyone's will, you know can have these SMS conversations and you know post on Twitter and all the rest of it, they don't know how to have conversations. So I just gave you a second idea. You have people that know how to ask questions, show sincere interest in people, don't talk about themselves. When you're with that person, that person is 100% with you. They're looking you in the eye. Sometimes they might put their hand on their on your shoulder, all these types of things. NLP, some of you guys know what that is. What NLP is, is a study of people who are great communicators it, and then hoping to create great communicators by teaching people who aren't what the great, great communicators do to be great communicators. Well, let me tell you, the great communicators haven't spent a lot of time worrying about how to be great communicators. They just are. I just hope you put all those thoughts together. So here's the bottom line. Don't talk about yourself. Notice how frequently you use personal pronouns like I. And when you are breaking the habit of being essentially trying to direct the world's attention to you and you start asking them questions and making them feel like they're the center of your universe, it's not a long, drawn-out conversation. But when you leave that conversation and you go to talk to somebody else or what have you, that person is going to remember that you made them feel special because you asked them questions about themselves. You didn't spend the whole time talking about how great you were. You know, again, real estate agents, hope you're listening. They actually then will remember that conversation. You made them, made them feel fantastic because how frequently do people actually ask questions about you and then actually listen to the answers and then ask follow-up questions based on what you said? When was the last time you heard, heard felt heard? <laughs> you know, by anybody. It's If you have one person that actually listens to you, listens not with the intent uh, to think about what they're going to say or pivot the conversation about them, but listens for the intent of what you're saying and then asks more questions, actually thinking about what you said, if you've got one person in your life like that, you're blessed because most people do not, unfortunately. Again, because we live in such a neurotic, you know, sort of, you know, egotistical world right now. That And that's social media for you right there. So, here it is. You become that person with the it factor because when people have been with you, they have felt like you poured all the light on them. You, they felt special because you were focusing all your best energies on them. You guys get it? That is one of the key elements of having that it factor. That is one of the key elements and transcending, you know, essentially the droves of people that are all running in circles, looking for attention, you know, always looking for someone else to say they're special. I, you know, Make them feel special by listening to them. Make them feel special by listening to what they say and then asking questions about what they said. Make them feel special because you were giving them your time, your focus, your energy, and, and sincerely appreciating them. When you do that, you will find yourself completely and totally orbiting a different planet and people will not understand how you did it. And you can do this at any age. You can do this at, again, there's no criteria beyond other than, you know, essentially this conversational thing. Maybe you know people like this and you were wondering how they came about it. It probably was natural for most of them. Maybe others of them learned how to do it. It's not complicated. It starts with disengaging from your ego's need to have recognition from other people. And I'll tell you how Julie and I have learned how to do this, frankly, coaching. Through coaching calls, through hundreds of thousands of coaching calls, we learned to completely make it not about us. And it's been a blessing and it wasn't easy, but we did it. We didn't want to have any conversation about us. And frankly, that's the reason that Julie and I do struggle to talk about ourselves on this podcast. And in real life, frankly, we will talk about ourselves on this podcast. We'll talk, share with maybe 10% of our personal lives with you. We'll talk about our career achievements. That's fine. That's, you know, that's okay. But beyond that, it's difficult because we, it's not because we're super private or, you know, have any, I mean, we're pretty much boring people. But, you know, why is it? Because we want to have everything we do be about you because we're sincerely interested and making it about you, making the conversations about you makes us better and makes us better at our jobs 
It makes us better at co being coaches or providing content for you guys. You get it? And you're going to be the exact same way if you allow yourself to be. So please avoid the natural, especially in real estate, temptation to want to make yourself the center of every single conversation because it'll make it so when people see you, they're going to say, if you're one of these, like most people, they're going to see you and they're going to say, I don't want to go talk to Bob. All Bob does is talk about himself. They won't think that, but that's actually positively what they'll, how they'll react to you versus if they see you and last time you made them feel fantastic for the reasons I just explained, they'll want to gravitate towards you. They'll even run to you to talk about you, they'll, to talk with you because you made them feel good. You guys get it? I know you do. I Hopefully you had that one person in your life that will actually sincerely listen to you. If you don't, become that one person for somebody else and they might reciprocate. But it is not easy to find somebody who's operating at that level emotionally is really what we're talking about. All right, I'm going to go through three uh, Julie's last three points because she took so much time to create these points. Uh, do you pre-qualify 100% of your leads, both buyer and seller, before you meet with them? Just to make it super easy, um, I know most of you don't. 90% of you have never learned how to do it, especially in this past market, because frankly, it was easy to pre-qualify a buyer because of interest rates and all the rest of it. Now you absolutely positively need to learn how to pre-qualify. Premier Coaching, of course, has the scripts for that. So make sure you're using our scripts. And all again, a script is some of you repel from the word script. I have no idea why, because all a script is is, a, is essentially a conversation outline. Again, with our scripts, we want you to, to memorize them first internalize them, which is where you're in the process of making them yourself, making them your own, changing the words. Maybe you're, you know, put in, interjecting some of your personality. And then we want you to uh, personalize them. So it goes memorize, um, internalize, personalize. Personalize is where you really make them yourself. And then you even forget maybe where you originally learned the script. You guys get it? That's really uh, conscious, uh, uh, conscious competence is where we want you to get with all the scripts. All right, next point. Do you have unique proven pre-listing package. That's really huge. In this day and age, if you're not sending something that's unique to you, that's essentially shining the light on your specific USPs, if you're just sending what your broker gives you to send, there's no particular reason why you're going to win on a competitive listing appointment versus an agent that actually has taken the time to create something uh, special. Our, our When you join Premier Coaching, you get our pre-listing pack. It's already done for you. It's a template. We've even got somebody on staff that can actually modify it and use your logo, use your brand, use all your own personal information. And maybe you have some USPs that are unique to you. That's great. If you're an EXP agent and you're part of our EXP group, you know, we want you to include a guaranteed home sale program. You can because you have the iBuyer program, for example. We want you to talk about the different advantages that you have because you're an eXp agent. Maybe you have, for example, and we encourage you to have this, a communications guarantee. We want you to absolutely positively have something in the seller's hands prior to you going in the listing appointment that will, in most cases, sell the seller on you before you get there. And that's really what an effective pre-listing pack is. It is a silent salesperson. Julie and I originally created ours because we were, frankly, getting burned out and going on listing appointments. I know, first world problems. And we hired someone to go on listing appointments for us. And her name was Lisa. Lisa had everything going for her except skills. So we did not want to wait for Lisa to develop the skills because it would take too long. We did not expect her to get the uh, have a conversion ratio of appointments to listings taken like ours. So we created the pre-listing pack and the pre-listing pack got her to the point where she was almost as effective as we were taking listings. Julie and I might take nine out of 10 or 10 out of 10 and she was taking like seven or eight out of 10. The pre-listing pack was doing the selling for her prior to her getting there. That's the reason it's critical that you use a pre-listing pack. It answers the questions that you are living in fear of having asked of you. Why would I list with you? What makes you special? Tell me about your commission. Will you reduce your commission? All that Mickey Mouse is handled in the pre-listing pack. And we want you to absolutely positively use one and use ours because it will get you the listing. And again, guys, Julie and I are proudly associated with eXp Realty. It's one of the best career moves we've ever made in our 30 years in the real estate industry. So please do consider eXp Realty. And we'd love the opportunity to have you part of our eXp Realty group. And all you got to do is just text me directly at 512-758-0206, 512-758-0206, and let's have a conversation about eXp Realty. In a changing market like this, then you guys can see this in the numbers. Here, let me share something with you. Just This is crazy. eXp Realty, I think I got my numbers right. I checked on this yesterday. At the end of last year, had 70,000 agents. eXp Realty now has 85,000 agents. Can you do that math? I think it's 25% increase. 
and the number of agents. And that's net agents. And this has been a tough year for all real estate brokerages. I bet the brokerage you're at, unless it's like a you know five agent shop, you are losing agents. I bet your brokerage is losing agents and not gaining agents. Agents are flocking to eXp. They're, le they're leaving the other brokers and they're going to eXp. Why? Because eXp is generally speaking going to save you money on commission splits. That alone is going to be enough to have all of you go to eXp. But in addition to that, eXp is the first brokerage we've ever seen that is frankly, and I hate to use this word because everyone says it and it doesn't usually mean anything, but it's truly agent centric. And here's the agent centric test in our minds. It's very simple, right? The old question is, what are you paying your broker? The new question is, what is your broker paying you? By doing what you're doing at eXp, in other words, you're selling, listing, buying, you're doing what you're doing at eXp, you will actually start creating multiple streams of income. Yes, I'm talking about revenue share, but I'm also talking about the fact you get stock awards and all the rest of it. This is what all of us, by the way, should have done years ago um, had we you know, been, I think, frankly, a little bit more cautious and a little bit more weary and a little bit more professional and understanding that the great seller's boom market wasn't going to last forever. Now you're wishing you would have joined DXP three, four years ago. Um, and yeah, like I said, it's been the greatest business move. It's been the greatest compliment to all of our podcasts, all of our books, all of our coaching calls, all of the years in the industry. EXP Realty is absolutely in perfect alignment. If you love what we do, you're going to love being at EXP because it's essentially like a continuation of what you experienced with Julie and I. So please do consider joining EXP and let's have that conversation 512-758-0206. And yes, that is my cell phone and please do not call, please do text. All right, two final points. Do you list 90% of the listing appointments you go on or at least 50? Or, and here's what the point of Julie's point was with that one. A lot of you have been coached and trained, and I don't know why you'd accept this, to, to basically be okay with taking 50% of the appointments you go on. That makes no sense to me. That's disgusting, to be honest with you. It, so you proactively lead generated the listing appointment, the seller. You've then pre-qualified. So you're not going on an appointment where the seller's not motivated. You know what the seller, what their motivation is. You know what they sell or, the seller wants as far as uh, price. You know everything there is to know about that seller because you followed our system. You sent the pre-listing pack. You've essentially uh, followed our listing appointment um, you know, presentation, which we've uh, obviously you get with part of Premier Coaching. You go to the seller's house. If you're not taking... Nine out of 10 listings you go on or 10 out of 10 listings you go on, you're not following the system. And what some of these coaches and trainers, and I put the, it, you, I'm air quoting right now, what they'll tell you is that it's okay if you only take 50% of the appointments you go on. That is unacceptable. You do not, would you, if, you know, if you have children, would you be okay with the kid coming home and essentially getting an F? You know, mom and dad, I got an F, you know, I got 50%, you know, good enough, right? Is, is that what you would accept? And yet the industry thinks that's an okay ratio when it comes to listing appointments. That makes no sense. The reason that's happening is because agents are going on listing appointments and they're not following a, a system like ours, which is the seven step listing process, which you do get as far as premier coaching. So I'm going to tell you guys about a podcast Julie and I are working on, and this shouldn't surprise any of you. We have, so you guys probably know Julie and I write for the National Association of Realtors. We write for Real Trends, we write for Florida Association of Realtors, we write for like six other associations of realtors, we write articles for, I mean, there's some I'm forgetting. Julie does most of it, but that's one of her main focuses in our business is she's essentially doing most of the writing. She and I come up with outlines for the articles and then she writes them and then and sometimes we have an editor, we'll go through them, but here nor there. What I'm uh, focused on and what we're focused on with what we're creating now is the truth about what we think is going to happen next in the real estate industry because it's all over the place. Trying to decipher with this headline to, to, from that, like I saw a headline yesterday or maybe it was the day before in CNBC where it's quoting, I think it was Mark Zandi, where they were talking about, you know, just different scary clickbaity headlines. So we're going through all of that. And it is a huge amount of work because everybody is like when he, Mark, for example, says he thinks that if there's no recession, home values will lose 10%. And if there's a recession, home values will lose 20%. Well, Julie and I, it was just a little snippet, a couple of quotes, and that was dropped in to essentially, I guess, be clickbait. We went and researched the original thing that he said and put it back in context. And then when you see it in context, it does not have the same meaning. 
So that's what I mean when I say it's a lot of work. Because if you just read what so-and-so expert said, and you don't actually go back and decipher what it was or the context in which they said it, or look at the research in which they based it on, a lot of people, and I, I don't know if it's conscious or unconscious, probably conscious truthfully, they have political agendas. You can call them agendas, but I call them political agendas. Like how many people want to argue about whether we're in a recession or not? How many people want to argue whether, you know, we're in inflations, you know, you guys get it? How can you actually argue that the cost of living is increasing? How can you argue that gas prices is up? Why is that a political thing? That's just a fact, right? And yet everyone wants to politicize things nowadays. And it's all going back to the tribal nature of humans. that has been essentially amplified by social and blah, 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 blah. But here's what we're focused on. We are doing going to do a real drill down series of podcasts. And we're probably going to do a YouTube series on this as well. How you can start uh, essentially deciphering the cryptic, often cryptic information you're getting from various sources, and you can become your own best expert. Because if we make you really strong at being uh, at cutting through all the fear-based, you know, BS, then you're going to be really strong for your centers of influence, past clients, that your real estate market, your fellow real estate professionals. If we make you really, really good in uh, very difficult to uh, you know emotionally. Uh, manipulate, right? If we make it so that when you read a headline, your brain does not naturally go into fear mode. Your brain naturally goes into, well, let's read this. Let's find out what the facts are. Let's do a little Google search and find out actually if this reporter is, you know, carrying water for some political aspect that maybe I shouldn't be believing, right? And I'm not, you know, Julie and I are not citing on blue or red. We're just, you know, observant of all this. Um, Because back when the real estate market crashed in 07, it wasn't politicized like it is now. There's so much garbage that's in our society that really is doing nothing but hurting people. And you've got to be able to rise above it. You have to be able to look at stuff for what it is and then rise above it. And then even if you are following our advice and you're being uh, media free in your life, you know, which one of the things we uh, frankly, you know, we prescribe this to everybody, your coaching clients, if you have coaching clients or your uh, you know, maybe you have a podcast, maybe you have, you obviously have real estate clients. If you're EXP or EXP people, you, people in your world, your family, your neighbors, they're not, they're not sifting and sorting the content. They're just reading whatever the clickbaity headlines are and their lives are becoming smaller and smaller and smaller, more fear-based, more fear-based, more fear-based. That's what's happening. And you have to be the person. Remember we were talking about the power of having the it factor. Well, one of the elements of the it factor also is that you're going to not be so triggered emotionally by, you know, headlines and whatnot. You have a calmness, a stillness about you. You have, there's, again, a je ne sais quoi, as our French would say, right? You have some really ununderstandable um, element about you, something that attracts people to you. That comes from you consciously working on it, you consciously doing a SWAT on yourself, right? Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. And if you acknowledge the fact that you talk about yourself too much, if you acknowledge the fact that you, you know, pivot conversations to be about yourself too much, if you acknowledge the fact that you want to become a, O for opportunity, a better version of yourself as a real estate salesperson, you need to get your skills to the next level. If you accept the fact that this market could be the greatest threat to you, or, you know, frankly, then you have to go back to W and SWAT and acknowledge the fact what your weaknesses are. Be honest with yourself about what your weaknesses are. That's really where it all starts. It's so easy in real estate. Look, <laughs> you know, I've often wondered why sometimes Julie and I, um, why we do great in, with some groups and we don't do so great with other groups in the real estate industry. I don't completely understand it because we're not political. We're not saying anything is really controversial. And I know why. I, I think I finally at 52 years old figured it out because we tell the truth. That's why. And because the truth sometimes isn't rah, rah, you know, woo, woo, you know, walk on fire, everyone jump and clap. And that's what the industry is addicted to. The industry thinks that the world is all predicated on mindset. The industry seems to believe that everything centers around yourself and the, you know, you focus on something, the universe will bring it to you that that's what the industry, some people in the industry believe actually is stronger than your actions and stronger than your ability to think and stronger than your ability to act and stronger than your ability to be of service to other people. You guys get it. So those woo woo types, they aren't attracted to Julie and I because we'll say, we'll say things that aren't in alignment with their worldview that essentially the world centers around, the universe centers around whatever their prominent thoughts are, and you can manifest everything you want in life. 
The whole manifesting thing, there's truth to that, but it comes after a massive amount of action. And the actions start with having your skills. Don't you intuitively know what I'm saying is true? <laughs> you do, don't you? Don't you just instantly know what I'm telling you guys is the truth? Doesn't it just seem to resonate with you? Don't you like the fact I do. I mean, frankly, having these conversations with all of you or talking to other people that share this approach to life, don't you like the fact that when you're uh, operating on this wavelength that you feel less stress, you feel more clarity, you feel more of a sense of purpose, more in a, you have more control? That's what basically being focused, being uh, essentially skills-based and being really your strongest, I, this is what, 10th time on this podcast? If you're losing direction, if you don't know really where your focus should be, if you're getting confused, get back in alignment with what you, when you're the happiest, most content, right? There's three things that every man or woman needs in life. They need something to do that gives them a sense of purpose. And for you, it's being of service to other people. I will prescribe that to you. The thing that's going to give you the highest sense of purpose in this planet, professionally at least, well, really in life, is being of service to other people. And, and that, so that's your purpose. The number two thing is having somebody to love. And if you have multiple people to love that also love you, win, right? So having a purpose in your life, in other words, you wake up every day and you've got something to do that makes you feel like you're being in contribution. You have a purpose. Number two, you have somebody to love and hopefully they love you too, or you guys get the point. Number three, you have something to look forward to. If you've got those three things in your life, you're winning. If you don't, work on it. And this is your not, an excellent time to do it because here's the irony, oddly enough, of this real estate market. And you guys can go back in history and check me on this. The greatest fortunes of humans are always made during the greatest times of change. No exceptions. All the way back 4,000 years in the original history of humans, the written, I mean, all, we could all probably find evidence of this on caves before they even were writing on parchment, right? Go all the way back to when you can originally find original books and, you know, they now are discovering it. Turns out the Greeks were just essentially carrying the water for the great thinkers from before the Greeks, thousand, two thousand years before, you know, all this stuff. It's fascinating. But every single great man or woman in history has always uh, assessed, built, created their greatness during the greatest times of change. That's what we're in now. This is your opportunity. This is your way forward, sharing this wavelength having these types of thoughts. And look, guys, some of you are doing fantastic. Keep doing fantastic, but take it to the next level. Be very weary and cautious of, um, you know, complacency creeping in. Don't allow yourselves to have one great year and then next year is not going to be as great. Do not allow yourself to blame the market. If your business is off this year versus last year, and we can bounce this conversation back, but here's the reality of it. And the market changed, but you didn't change in time. And so your business fell off. You didn't keep up with the pace of the business. You didn't, you were too busy doing what you're doing. This is kind of your excuse, but it, it's legitimate. You were too busy doing what you were doing. Make the most of the opportunity that was in the immediacy of your life, right? You're orbiting a specific opportunity and you were focusing on a particular business model. All the while, the, the whole world was changing. The world now changes. If you didn't change fast enough, that's normal. Now go change urgently. The worst thing you can do is wait around to try to make your old obsolete business model work in this new business, in this new world, in this new orbit. Most of your thinking you're going to be able to carry forward, but a lot of it you're not. And a lot of it are the fundamental ways you've approached business, especially if you've only been in the business for the last 14 years. Look, you guys will pridefully... Uh, hang your hat on the world's going to return or I am strong enough. I'm stronger than the market. I'm going to make the world essentially orbit. I, it's my thinking. I'm going to, I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to make it work. You're going to somehow bend the will of the universe to be around you. And that's not, you might be able to do it in some ways. I'm not, some of you are very, very talented, you know, real estate professionals, but why bother? Why bother? Why don't you just essentially adjust to what the new market is offering you? Why don't you just pivot? Why try to bend the realities that are essentially the cards that are being handed to you now? Why are you trying to make those into a, you know, a flush? Why don't you instead go to another game, go to another table, ask for another uh, you know, deal of the cards? That's what, you know, there's, there's a whole bunch of sayings that I'm really addicted to. I love, I shouldn't say addicted, but the, you know, when the going gets tough, the smart leave. Now, when I originally heard that, being a, you know, 
a, a simple person from central Ohio, right? I found that offensive because I always taught when the going gets tough, the smart get going. But when the going gets tough, the smart leave. And I, and as I've gotten older, I realized what the essence of that was all about. If you're doing something that's not working anymore, stop trying to make it work. Go do something else because you could have just played it out. That could just be the end of the rainbow for that particular business model or that particular idea. You got to set it aside and go do something else. That's what the smart do. They don't sit around and try to make something that's not going to work, work. And that could, by the way, that could be, you know, you might have relationships that are like that. You might have live in a community that's like that. Julie, you know, we've had experiences in all these things on an interpersonal level with, you know, friends and family or just didn't work anymore. So we set it aside. We didn't have some big, you know, emotional breakup. We just decided to move on because it wasn't really, we weren't, it wasn't working anymore in essence. And that can happen in a real estate market. That certainly can happen in a real estate brokerage where frankly, there's a lot of real estate brokerages and teams that are going to be struggling in very significant ways because of this new market. You guys get it? Change the way you're thinking. Know that you can be more successful in this market because so many people are, your competition essentially is not going to be showing up to the game anymore at least for the next probably six to 12 months, maybe longer, because they're not going to be willing to pivot. They haven't discovered this podcast. They haven't realized that they still can be successful. A lot of people believe they can only be successful in a seller's market. Not true. You can be successful in any market. You have a real estate license. Your real estate license does not care what the interest rate is. Your real estate license only cares about the effort you make based on the actions you take, based on the skills you have to put in, uh, into action. You guys get it? That's what this is about. So look, I don't know where you're coming from emotionally about this new market. We're going to self-discover that on this new series that Julie and I are working on as far as the podcast goes. But please do recognize the fact that wherever you're coming from, new agent, experienced agent, grizzled, it does not matter where you're coming from. The reality of it is, is that your highest and truest purpose in this planet is being of service to other people. And in your current you know, incarnation, it's being of service to other people in the real estate industry. And if you are in alignment with that prominent thought all the time, frankly, everything else is going to line up behind you. That's the way it works. That's the way it works with everything in life, by the way. So hopefully you guys can, you know, internalize some of this. I know it doesn't, you know, resonate with everybody and that's okay, right? We don't have to resonate with everyone. We just, you know, uh, someone asked us, we are, I was actually on another podcast being interviewed and they asked us like, this person is real focused on numbers, followers and da, 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 da. I have no idea. I know when people listen to our podcast, I don't pay attention to anything else. I don't, I, I just don't care because we don't want to be well known. We want to be known well. And there is a difference. Julie and I really don't care to be famous, but we want the work, the effort we've taken, our career, our life's energy to be of service to other people. So we want to be known well. By we, we mean our work. We don't need to be well known. We don't need to be famous. We have no desire for that. And I've been very introspective about that, wondering if somehow, you know, maybe that's not the right way to think. It, it isn't a right way or a wrong way. It's what we want. We don't want to be the center of attention. We want the results that we get, that you guys get to be the center of attention. We don't want awards and plaques. Um, we want you to get the recognition. We want you to experience this success. You guys get it? We're being in alignment with our highest and truest purpose, which is being of service to all of you. So hopefully you will appreciate all of this and internalize it. And, and I sincerely hope it helps you um, in some small or maybe some very large, meaningful way. In the meantime, guys, thank you for continuing to make this the number one listen to daily podcast for real estate professionals. It is truly our, our, our pleasure and our honor to do this every day. We, again, we're going to be expanding the podcast. We're going to be expanding our presence on YouTube. We're going to be doing a lot more content syndication because actually it's fun and Julie and I enjoy uh, doing this type of thing every day. The YouTube stuff is starting to come a little bit more naturally. You know, it's time consuming compared to doing a podcast. Um, doing a podcast, Julie and I just flow because we've done it for so long. You know, video a little bit more. It's a little bit more involved, but we're figuring it out. So if you're listening to us on YouTube, please do subscribe. If you're obviously listening to us on iTunes or any of the other podcast listening widgets, please do subscribe as well. Thank you again for making this number one listen to daily podcast for real estate professionals in at least the United States. You guys have a fantastic day. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.